Over the weekend, I had a chance to watch Emily in Paris on Netflix. Has been dividing opinion on the timeline. People have been, you know, talking about it, examining it from top to the bottom. And I don't know. I watched what four episodes, and then I kind of got put off of it. You know, it's not necessarily a TV series that's made for me. Um, it doesn't necessarily speak to my interest. And again, seeing you know these sort of like self-absorbed woman in a city sort of TV series have always kind of made me buff. Um, especially when the protagonist is pretty unlikable as the as it's been portrayed in girls but also the more mature i've become the more experience i've had with females and talking to them you start to realize that that character that they portrayed in girls Lena dunham portrayed so expertly is actually quite accurate because i was looking at it from a male point of view and thinking anyone that abhorrent anyone that disgusting anyone that's that self-absorbed and selfish and you know um sociopathic wouldn't have that many friends right because you know in men in male friendship groups the more selfish and into yourself you are the more likely you're going to have a smaller group of friends to choose from especially friends that legitimately rate you but in women uh, in 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 women in female friendship groups that's not necessarily the case because women by their you know by their very nature are quite self-absorbed so varying levels of narcissism can be um tolerated especially when it's viewed through the prism of them being cool and kooky and crazy right everyone kind of wants that sort of like um weird girls love that kind of sex in a city group of friends thing where like everyone occupies a certain sort of role she's a sassy one she's a strong one she's a liberal she's a this da, da, da. so that sort of occupying of those tropes is something that they sort of you know live for so i I could definitely understand them being tolerated so again i was completely wrong on that side of things and i guess emily in paris is definitely an example of that right this under this kind of weird idea it's kind of again an american idea and i think it's a little bit tongue-in-cheek too i think people are taking this series a little bit too a little bit too seriously it obviously does play up on a lot of the cliches that exist about paris and especially that exists about people who work in these sort of industries right fashion industry especially towards the top because you know she's working for a big media firm that has an account in france and she paris sorry, and she goes to help help them out during a downturn and she's essentially the millennial that's meant to come and drag this kind of storied brand kicking and screaming into the 21st century so there's obviously some things that you can take and experiences that you've definitely seen if you've worked within that industry or within those kind of industries nowadays in marketing and branding i've come across various of those kind of indices that they've described they're a bit cliche they're a little bit hacky but they are true right they are very accurate in terms of how you know the difficulties in trying to um get your leadership um team to agree to some kind of to take the social media seriously right even i can say that during my positions it's been a constant fight um the fight in just terms of different cultures and understanding and all this malarkey, especially um viewed through the prism of fashion where they will probably look at american fashion and the tory birch aesthetic Michael Kors type of thing as really um, antithetic to anything that they represent, right? It goes against everything that Parisian uh, fashion is about, especially when you consider some of the luxury heritage brands that they have out there. It just doesn't make any sense. But I think the the show itself does a good job in presenting it um, in a very truthful way as best as possible. It does a really good way of presenting the the protagonist Emily as a very vulnerable, um, emotional person. That's necess that kind of you see a lot in those kind of industries, design, fashion, music. You you sometimes you you sometimes go into these industries um wanting them to fill a void right you have a hole inside of you and you want the place that you work at to kind of fill it which is really dangerous really toxic you end up kind of working you know long hours because you're definitely doing something that you enjoy um most of the time especially even if you're a privileged person and you come from a really high position and you've got friends in the industry you still have to eat shit right even if you're flipping kate muscle's daughter you're still gonna have to go to vogue and photocopy a bunch of stuff get people coffees take notes at meetings all the kind of um you know uh runty sort of work that's going to really demean you really going to make you question your ego in order for you to kind of progress it's sort of like a necessary step to you have to kind of go through there is no kind of skipping that so so I think it doesn't so I think naturally once it happens and you kind of get broken down and kind of built back up in fashion you're net you're naturally going to seek a lot of validation a lot of your kind of insights and in life are going to kind of come through that prism and I like how they've kind of balanced the idea of her having trouble connecting with people in fashion and also having trouble connecting with people in the outside life right um trying to understand um for them to try and understand like why she cares this deeply about something that she just works at because most people in life just work a job and pay the bills and keep it moving but um, unfortunately when you're involved in something that's that's kind of your calling and something that you kind of love um with all your heart 
and you get paid shitty anyway for it, but you still love to do it, you're going to do a lot more. You're going to go above and beyond most people that just go and collect a paycheck, which is not necessarily, you know, it's not a good thing. It doesn't necessarily paint you in a good light, but it just definitely is what it is. But I thought the show was pretty decent. I think the outfits are a little bit cringe. I think this article from Harper's Bazaar kind of speaks upon some of the outfits that she wore. I think the fashion could have been updated a little bit. I think her hair being the same throughout the entire episodes I watched from one to four, her hair had rarely changed unless she goes to her out for a run. She's got that massive kind of, what they could say, kind of Fox News anchor health thing going on. That's just a little bit odd. She looks a lot better when her hair is pinned up. The outfits are really ghastly. Um, they sort of, again, it's sort of like an American person cosplaying as a Parisian um, fashion influencer or fashion insider. Really, really bad. They probably could have, they probably could have done, they probably could have gone a long way if they kind of hired some of the old Vogue Paris crowd, the Maluela Alts, the Kareem Reutfelds. Um, who's the other lady that does, that's assisting Karina, um, uh, Malia Alt? I forgot, there's another lady, but there's a few of them girls that they could, probably could have gone and spoken to. And even just the hair, they could have done that backcombing thing that French people love to do, where you sort of like wake up, like you just got out of bed, right? That kind of, um, um, that kind of, uh, you know, yeah, just gotten out of bed chic, whatever it may be. But it's Harper's Bizarre article sort of like details some of her looks in there. Let's quickly read through this article. It says, it's fashion's most polarizing figure, Emily in Paris. It says, um, if I had to name the most stylistically polarizing character of the year, it would have to be Emily Cooper, aka Emily in Paris. Where to start with the Sex and the City creator, Darren Starr's latest offering. Okay, I didn't know that. He actually the one that created it. The show follows an American 20-something who moves to Chicago to Paris for a social media strategy job. And quite honestly, I'd be wary of hiring somebody from that job who has a 48 Instagram in followers. But okay, cue suspension of belief. Which is interesting. I think that's what makes it actually really cool that she comes from Chicago. So she's obviously had to reinvent herself in her own hometown she's had to kind of convince people in her own friendship group that what she does is important when they probably don't think it's that important and then you're gonna have to prove yourself again at the highest level that there is in fashion which is in paris right that's where that's where basically fashion lives that's where the the industry the machine the business side of thing gets done there and maybe milan but mostly in paris so to go so she's not even like she's coming from new york or la la is probably the worst example but new york being a good example where they actually have a fashion week the chicago have a fashion week i don't know i bet it's flipping horrible but just imagine what it takes for somebody from chicago to make it in fashion in the u.s and then to try and go and make it in paris like so i think that's what makes it a pretty good inst um follow uh show to watch and again the point about her having only 48 instagram influence Inf uh, followers on the show and then of course it rising as she continues gallivanting around paris is a pretty decent note she says the following with the article it continues cue the whole culture shock narrative uh, rife with cliches about france sorry about french and american people alike sprinkling a love triangle in which emily hooks up with her new friend camille's boyfriend cementing her as a actual villain of the show instead of the boss sylvie and garnished with some fashion choices in a very whitewashed version of paris and there you have it emily in a nutshell yeah it's whitewashed but again i don't understand this whitewashing effect in it People tell stories the way they want to tell their story. If you want to tell your story about France or Paris fashion through the prism of a, you know, 20 something um, white woman, then fair enough. Her experience is going to be completely different from somebody from another culture. I guess if you want to tell that story, go and make your own show. I think this idea that all shows need to cater to all people is utterly bizarre. I never really understood that. Um, if a show doesn't cater towards you, there's, there's especially nowadays in the, age, in the age of streaming and the age of this political correctness and so social justice there's definitely more of a push from networks to have a bit more of a diverse showing of shows and again if that thing doesn't exist if i was a filmmaker or a director or a producer i would get out my iphone and try and film a short and secure a deal with a streaming platform like that kind of legendary story of linda dunham did with her show i think she had a show i forgot what it was called that was street that was available to stream online and then that sort of essentially got her where she needed to get to now of course that story has been lionized with somewhat i'm sure most of her kind of introduction into the scene would kind of you know rest upon her network and her connections that she has in the industry blah 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 blah, blah. but in general doing the work and trying to make a change of providing some level of art that you feel representative of yourself is a far better way to go about it than just poking holes at stuff that already exists because that is easy to do so it continues there's a lot to talk about the show but i'm here to discuss the looks some of which had me screenshotting with grudging admiration and some of which had me rolling with laughter as i watched the internet drag her for a fifth and final time so look number one i hated this look right i think there's 
I'm not. A, I love patterns. I think patterns really work really well. You know what I also hate about it, uh, fashion. There's her. There's her running, and she's running in a lace top. You know those tops that girls wear when they go to the park. She's running in one of those things and like Nike Pro leggings, like really bizarre outfit. I don't even understand what that was all about. It would be funny if they explained some of the choices and just say, hey, you know, actually what happened there? She forgot her T-shirt and that was the only white thing that she had to put on. But that was a really odd choice. But this first look was hideous. I'm a fan of patterns on patterns. I don't mind it. I think the top button being done and that being exposed underneath was really an odd choice. Either you button it or you don't. Um, I don't like the skirt, I don't like the shirt, it just looks horrible. And again, the hair doesn't match the outfit. It kind of reminds me of a lot of those girls you'd see going on a night out after work in Liverpool Street, right? That wanna act that wanna dress a bit funky. So they put on a really loud jacket, but everything else is, you know, basic bitch kind of um normal kind of outfit you know that you'd pick up at flipping zara but they've got some spicy jacket on that's gonna really cause a scene with their group of friends we're all wearing the same thing that's kind of what it reminds me of so we'll skip that one look number two um yeah th this was maybe a, f a better look but again i hate those boots she has a tendency to wear those boots a lot i'm not sure if that's a stylistic choice from the stylist or whether or not the emily girl herself wanted to wear it um again the difference between her and the lady in front is you know striking there um look number three was probably my most favorite look which is probably the most cliche her wearing this beret and this amazing um you know blazer short shorts kind of combination with the heels really really good look i loved it right so let's look at the description for this look three there's enough there's nothing too obscene in episode three unless you count the amount of chanel emily owns she's out here double c strapped like it's nobody's business i i really need to know what her monthly salary is because this wardrobe is expensive in this episode i find her black and white checkered veronica beard blazer and shirt combo paired with a chanel lambskin flat bag and a black satin christian louboutin uh Solvac ankle strap pumps and red beret quite pleasing it's a cute look i'll give it that yeah it's definitely a cute look and again that's a good thing they did too they didn't make her out to be an intern she's actually a working professional in fashion so she came there with her own salary you know with an actual salary job that allowed her to move to paris and live there because you know it's not a, it's not a cheap city at all to go and frolic around especially in the, with the fashion scene but of course you have to understand they're going to fashion shows they're going to gallery openings free drinks free everything you get sometimes if you're representing brands and you have a showroom you get to pay costs for certain designer items so your life can be compensated to some level but for her to be decked out in chanel and louboutins you know what i mean it definitely has a salary attached to it so i definitely love that look look number four i flipping hate that might be in episode four i saw that too shocking 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 outfit everything about it is horrible the french gay guy that they play in there too looks ridiculous um, but again, I think that kind of like sassy black French guy look with the colorful blazers and the weird trousers is a thing, right? With the no no socks and loafers look. So maybe that's quite accurate. I hate that he doesn't ever have any lip balm on. His lips are always really crusty. Just do his lips up properly. The fade is a little bit shocking. But again, so c'est la vie. You continue. Look five, I didn't see because I didn't watch past this episode. So I don't even know what that look is. But again, it's hideous. Again, the hair. Hair doesn't change throughout the entire episode. She has these massive Fox News curls on. Really, really odd. Um, look six and seven. Look seven, I don't mind. She's got like a hood by hair on jacket. Wow, a hood by hair on cropped coach jacket. It looks like massive hoop earrings and a woolly hat. This is her being ghetto, all right? And still that flipping stupid hair in the back. That, that look on look five is horrendous. I mean, look six. Um, look eight here looks truly shocking another beret and then look nine again really really bad and then because it, it's odd because most of the time you would say especially because considering her frame because she's a really fit woman if you look through in episodes one and two you'll see she's got like a, a you know a quite obvious six-pack right she's running in the series every day five miles which i like her little hint there right I'm, I'm sure that kind of triggered some people out there who are like you know um easily triggered by those kind of things but She's got the figure to really wear stuff. To She's got the figure that most things should look really good on her. But it definitely goes to show the importance of styling, right? People love to say, oh, if you're skinny, everything looks good on you. No, it doesn't. If you don't style yourself in the appropriate way and you don't wear stuff that actually flatters your figure or that accentuates the things that, you, that are the best about you objectively, then you're definitely going to come off looking a bit strange. So again, the fashion choices are a bit odd. The story is a bit cliched. But again, I don't think they're taking stuff too seriously. So far, it's been a bit of a standout hit. People hate it. People love it. It's the perfect response that you need for a TV series. It's available now on Netflix. So definitely check that out. Emily in Paris streaming, right? now